Welcome to yet another episode of the African Storyteller Podcast, where we share Africa's stories of growth and prosperity, and we profile companies that are growing in Africa with Africa, because Africa is an investment destination of choice. Today, we are profiling a company that has done prolific work in growing the African continent's economy and growing in Africa with Africa. In March 1973, the iconic BMW brand decided to grow its global footprint and establish its first production facility outside of Germany. And guess where? Here in South Africa, in Roslyn, just outside of Pretoria. Today, 50 years later, 1.6 million BMW vehicles have been produced in South Africa for the local and international markets. With the 300,000 BMW X3 rolling out of its assembly line just recently. BMW has created 5,300 direct jobs, 23,000 jobs from its other businesses, and in total, 50,000 jobs that are direct and indirect jobs. Last year, BMW Group South Africa contributed 2.6 billion to South Africa's economy. 2.6 billion. An additional 12 billion has been invested in the Roslyn facility since 1995. Add to that, the company has expanded its portfolio to include a national sales company that sells and distributes BMW, meaning BMW Motorrad, a financial services company as well that was established in 1990, and a software company, which is their IT hub, that services more than 50 countries. What an achievement. What an achievement indeed. It's a sterling example of growing in Africa and this instance in South Africa with the rest of Africa. Today, we are honored to be joined by the CEO of BMW Group South Africa, Peter van Binsbergen. Peter, I probably butchered your surname, but thank you and welcome. Thank you so much for being with us today. We really appreciate the opportunity to share the BMW story. And BMW has been with us forever. You know, it feels like BMW has been with South Africa for the longest time. And it's one of the oldest car brands that we can associate with as South Africa. What informed the BMW Group's decision to build its first production facility outside of Germany here in South Africa way back in 1973? That decision was made more than 50 years ago. So as you can imagine, to give a definitive answer, I can't just go to our server and download the presentation from then. There is some speculation as to what informed the decision, but some things are pretty clear to us. I think the first is there was an existing factory already in the Roslyn area available. There were some Pretoria businessmen, one of whom had already worked with BMW through the BMW motorcycles business. And they came to BMW and proposed, why don't you build cars here in South Africa? The timing was just perfect because BMW had just taken over the glass car factory in Dingolfing mm -hmm. and so they had exactly the right product to go out and branch out into another country to experiment, let's say, with production outside of Germany. Mm -hmm. And I guess at that stage the board, always being forward-looking, was already debating when do we globalize, when do we leave the borders of Germany and produce a, a car outside of Germany. So I think everything just worked perfectly together and that's why they made the decision to come here. And um, you know, the proof is in the results. We've been here for more than 50 years now, in our 51st year. We're now part of the global BMW production network of 30 sites in, in 15 countries and a, a key part of BMW's production network. So it was a great decision. Clearly it was a great decision and one that when we as South Africa look at, we can't actually be more prouder of a company that has demonstrated not just good corporate citizenship, but putting its money where its mouth is. One of the challenges that um, Africa as a whole is faced with is um, the challenge of skills. So over the years, how have you actually ensured that you are capacitating yourself for the expansion and the growth of the business? And you are also building school skills, not just for today, but for the future as well. That's a key topic in our industry. And I think it's, it's an ongoing topic of an industry that's constantly transforming and reshaping itself. As you can imagine, right in the beginning, we took over an existing factory and there were obviously people in the area who had skills in building cars, but I think they were building Jeep type of off-road vehicles. So they had to be trained up to build the first BMW products. 
And as time progressed, of course, um, the technology changes in our products. We started producing a broad range of products. Even the 8 Series was produced here in South Africa. Then we moved to um, production for export, which meant, of course, we had to pick up um, the speed of our production line. We went from one shift to two shifts to three shifts. That meant recruiting people. And the next challenge lies ahead of us right now. We've just announced the new X3 is coming to Roslyn, and we're going to bring the plug-in hybrid here. So we're going to electrify the plant, so to speak. So once again, the topic of skills development comes in because it's the first time we build a car with an electric drivetrain. But none of this should be surprising to our industry. It's pretty much something we know is coming. So it's, it's all about being proactive and recruiting your people and developing the skills in advance. In 1978 already, we built our first training center at the Roslyn plant. And it's been very successful for us, working with vocational schools, preparing our employees for the change. And as you can imagine, right now we're deep in the preparations for the plug-in hybrid in Roslyn. And what are some of the iconic cars that these workers have actually worked on over the past 50 years? The Roslyn factory, in fact, is a, a landmark production facility in the BMW Group because exactly the term we use, the iconic products we produce there. In the first two decades of Roslyn production, we only produced cars for South Africa. So we had a certain degree of freedom, yeah. which our predecessors used very well. Mm -hmm. And we produced some very special cars with the, the whole idea to, to be successful in motor racing. Mm -hmm. And of course, probably the car that stands out for all of us is the Gusheshe, the 325 IS. Yeah. What a car. Today, still a car we all love. And um, we also produced the 333i here. It was only produced in South Africa for South Africa and only 210 units built. So probably one of the most scarce BMWs on the planet. We produced the 745i for South Africa, a very special car with the M1 engine in it. And it also went motor racing. So it's probably the only 7 Series to ever race. And in fact, when we produced that car here at the tip of Africa, it was the fastest production BMW in the world. So these cars stand out not just for collectors here in South Africa, but collectors all over the world. So the cars that BMW has produced out of Roslyn have historic uh, milestones, mm -hmm. just as the Roslyn facility itself. Can you share with us some of the milestones that the facility has actually achieved over the years? Because it is now globally recognized and respected as a world-class facility that has bagged a number of awards and recognition. For sure. The, the plant, of course, as you mentioned, was the first time BMW went over its borders and produced globally. And it was this first step in globalization. And I think that's still remembered in, in Germany. This was the plant where it all started for the BMW Group. Something very key to South Africa is that the BMW plant was the first to embrace the, the government's industry program called MIDP in the mid-90s, where we went from producing products just for South Africa to producing one single model in the plant, but for export to the world. And today we export to more than 40 countries worldwide. How many African countries? About 14 African countries get our product. And of course, with the African Free Trade Agreement coming, it will even be more. But that was a key milestone, not just for BMW, but for South Africa, because in switching to production for export, what, what happened was we, we focused on one product with higher volume. As I said, we went from one shift to two shifts to three shifts, so we can now produce 70,000 units in our plant at full capacity. But by producing one product in South Africa, you could start to localize components, which meant our suppliers came to South Africa and employed even more people. And that's where the multiplier effect comes in. And it showed that the South African government's policy, which is a brilliant policy, was the right way to go. And of course, the other manufacturers have followed. There are, there are seven OEMs already producing in South Africa following the same model. And the eighth one is coming soon. Oh, wow. That's actually quite impressive. So you recently turned 50, yes. right? To the outside person, it looks like it's all just been hunky-dory and easy. Mm -hmm. BMW just making cars, beautiful cars training people, investing money into the market. What have been some of your challenges over the past 50 years? And most importantly, what are some of the challenges that you've had to deal with in the past five years? Over 50 years, many challenges, in fact, global challenges have faced us all. I mean, think of the oil crisis in the 70s, think of the banking crisis in the late 2000s, or the COVID crisis in, in, in 2020, and then followed by the, the semiconductor supply crisis. So we faced all of those challenges. Mm -hmm. But I think the fact that BMW is in such a healthy state shows A, how robust the BMW Group strategy is, but also how resilient the people of South Africa are. Because not only did we face these global crises, but we also had our local challenges to, to, to live up to. But here in South Africa, of course, we face the challenges of our, our whole infrastructure and the logistics infrastructure challenges, which you read about daily in the press, yeah. and the energy supply crisis that we face in this country. And how are you solving for those? Well, I think 
one thing you can do is complain about them. What I believe in is that we need to work together to solve them. Work together with government and industry to solve the, the, the challenges. The resilience of South Africans, we find a solution, right? We're working on, on the topics, we're, we're getting through them all. And I think one thing that you'll see the BMW Group does very clearly is we believe in being part of the solution. So um, our, our offices are powered by, by photovoltaic, so solar energy. We have a, an agreement with a, a biogas plant near Bronco Sprite called bio 2 watt They already produce about a third of the plant's energy that's required. So not only are we moving to renewable energy, which is good for the environment, but we're also taking a bit of the load of ESCOM, allowing the, the grid to stabilize. And I think many other companies are doing the same thing here in South Africa, so that we jointly find solutions to our problems. I think in many ways, BMW, the brand, epitomizes Ubuntu, which basically means, you know, I am because you are. Um, I like your slogan that says you are building more than just cars, but you are also building communities, but you're also finding solutions to some of the toughest challenges that the country is actually grappling with. And you're taking a lot of people along with you in this journey of creating a South Africa that is actually conducive for business, but most importantly, that creates opportunities and a better life for all. Do you want to share with us some of the social work that BMW does in its host communities? Our communities are very important to us because I think in the end we're a, a technology company but it's all about people, right? Um, what the products we produce, the customers we serve, we are serving people serving people in the end. So our, our, our employees, their families are very important to us. So we focus very much on the communities where our employees' families work and live. And BMW is always focused on the topic of education because we believe this country's biggest challenge, unemployment, initially must be addressed by education. So for years we've had an early learning center right there in Roslyn for our employees' young children. We then adopted a primary school in Shoshonguwe and we've worked with them to improve the facilities and the standards. We then moved on to a secondary school in Shoshonguwe and we work with a lot of vocational schools around apprenticeships and training of skills because we believe working through this, this whole value chain, we can help people to become more employable. And we use this phrase from moving from learning to earning. So I think that's really key in what we do. We recently also announced a new initiative together with UNICEF, where we're working with a number of schools, um, really addressing youth between the age of 13 and 21, and really trying to get them to be interested in science, technology, engineering, mathematics subjects and therefore to make them even more employable in our sector. But our idea there is to stimulate an interest in these subjects, first and foremost, and then to create the environment, so creating laboratories, equipment at the schools with which to discover you know, the exciting world of science and technology, and even guiding the, the, the youth in their decisions that they make um, to help the, the employment, employability in the future. And one thing I saw beautifully last week at Letterbong School is working with really young children around robotics and coding in a playful manner, but that, that is so key to the future where we know that IT and digitalization of our vehicles is so key. You mentioned the IT hub. These children might just be the people we employ in the future because their interest in, in, in IT started at school age already. Well, they definitely are your future employees. One of the things that I've also noticed is just how much BMW takes pride in its South Africa heritage and its rich history of being in South Africa and most importantly of basically being unapologetically and proudly so South African. You've got a relationship with Dr. Esther Matlangu, who is the iconic, world-renowned Ndebele artist. Um, it was a birthday yesterday, she turned 88, and you know, everybody has now associated her, her legacy, and how um, BMW has embraced it and taken the work that she is doing and continues to do to the world. Do you want to share with us um, the partnership between BMW and Dr. Matlangu? Certainly. Uh, the topic of art is, of course, uh, a key topic that BMW has been involved with over years, art and culture. It's part of humanity. It's part of what makes us who we are. And so we worked with um, Dr. Mashlango already in 1991, and she produced one of BMW's many art cars. In fact, we have an example of it right here. That's beautiful. It was the five series of that generation. Interestingly, this was the, the first car to be produced, art car, by a woman and by an African globally. So a key step again for BMW in embracing diversity, embracing the world. And this is a, a car very close to our hearts. It started the relationship with, with Esther Mashlangu. And um, BMW believes in long-term relationships. The same counts for the schools that we've worked with. We work with them for years and we stand by them. 
With Esther Mashlanga, we've worked over many years. We did a seven series together with her, or she did it together with us, the interior designs of it, also the Endebella art. And we've worked for years with her foundation, ensuring that her skill um, is passed on to the younger generation. So this Endebella art form is not lost to society as people become modern and focus on their cell phones instead of classic art. So I think the whole idea, again, of bringing art and education together is something that gels very well with our strategy. We don't just talk about STEM, in fact we talk about STEAM with the A standing for art. Absolutely, and you actually talk about passing on the skills that she has attained to the next generation of leaders. I know that BMW was um, recognized for the contribution that um, it had done to the youth employment um, scheme that was started by President Ramaphosa. Um, I also know that BMW is putting at the heart of its business the importance of diversity and the inclusion of women. But most importantly, I also know that BMW is right there at the forefront in helping South Africa to solve for the triple challenges of poverty, unemployment and inequality. Do you want to talk about the work that you're doing um, to empower our youth and women, not forgetting people with disability, and also to find solutions that create sustainable solutions for um, eradicating um, poverty, unemployment and inequality? Sure. I mean, I think in essence, the biggest challenge here is unemployment in this country. So the first step, creating jobs, is of course key. And um, working with our local suppliers, working with, with industry to create as many jobs as possible is our objective. So localization is key. And therefore also working with, say, the Automotive Industry Transformation Fund is all about localizing and creating jobs here. That's, that's the first step. Of course, skills development helps employability as does education. So I think these are key topics and that's why we do them. The, the Yes for Youth program I think is an absolutely wonderful program. When I heard about it, I immediately said this is something we need here at BMW. We were awarded, as you said, among the top 10 employers this year by, by the yes, yes for Youth organization and by our president indeed. And what's so beautiful about that program is that it's aimed 100% on youth first and foremost and it gives them a, a, a really a chance to get a, a job somewhere by giving them one year of employment to put into their CV, so real meaningful employment. And what's interesting to note is that uh, our, our 1,500 or so employees we've already put through the program, of them about 73% have been ladies, women. So that's a, a key, I think, impulse also to address the whole imbalance, let's say, in society of our economically active population also uh, reflecting our demographics. So that's a key topic that we've, we've focused on um, very clearly and we, of course, are very committed to the Yes for Youth program. We're also very involved, of course, in, in graduates and, and training graduates. We were, we were voted, I think, four times running already as the, the employer of, the, of choice by graduates. And we recently also were, were awarded as a top employer by the Top Employer Institute here in South Africa. And I think that shows that the, the measures we're putting in place to, to you know, help create jobs and help bring people into employment is being recognized by the people that we, whose lives we touch. So I think those all play an important role and of course we are very much committed to the topic of transformation. I have the privilege to lead the transformation work stream within the automotive industry so together with NAMSA and the Department of Trade and Industry as part of the whole SA Automotive Master Plan and there of course the topic of, of Triple BWE is the, the basis but we want to go beyond just legal compliance and ticking the boxes right so about meaningful change. And that topic is fully embraced also by our company. And we already passed the compliance level of, of B level four that's required. And we have a clear plan to really bring in meaningful change within the, the BE structure as well. And how transformed is the broader industry? It's not where it has to be, and that's clear. Um, we're all beyond the level four. So I, I think we're very proud as OEMs that all, all seven of us are already level three or better. We recently had a NAMSA thought leadership seminar where the topic was going beyond the requirement, you know, and that's really, I think we all stand behind that and we're all working on that throughout the entire value chain. I think that's very important. The OEM is responsible for their, their piece in the value chain, but we have our suppliers in the upstream and we have our retailers in the, in the downstream sector and we're working very closely with, with both parts of the value chain to make sure that it's uh, throughout the value chain that transformation is meaningful and is, is happening. And I'm sure a big part of that is also building the capacity because you only work with what you have. 
And sometimes you need to start from scratch to ensure that the output is what the market can actually absorb. You recently announced a 30 million um, donation to UNICEF for STEAM. Is that part of actually adding on to the capacity that the industry needs to build in order to ensure that transformation is happening at a faster pace? What it certainly does is it addresses the, the needs for, of our industry in that we are looking for um, employees in the future with a technological uh, bent to how they think. The topic of digitization is so key um, in the future of our industry and our IT hub, there's really a, a war for talent out there to find qualified IT um, students and graduates. We work with many universities but what we've said is working together with UNICEF, let's actually start already at the school age and let's inspire youth to have an interest in these in the in science, technology and digitization and, and therefore actually increase the pool of graduates that can serve in, in this industry. So definitely it addresses our future needs and make sure that the, the youth that are graduating, leaving school and graduating from university or vocational schools are employable in our industry. And that's, that's the point is that you, know, you address unemployment by also helping employability. And that's really the focus of the UNICEF collaboration. So now basically turning into the future, looking into the future, like if you had a crystal ball to look into the future, what does the future hold for BMW South Africa? Well, we've been here 50 years and I always tell my team we're not here to celebrate the past 50 years but to set up the next 50 years, right? So working towards the centenary. Exactly. And um, the first step is already done. So with our, with our uh, 50 year celebration, we announced the new X3 is coming to plant Roslyn very important because it secures jobs in, in Roslyn and in our suppliers for approximately the next decade. And with that, the fact that we are electrifying the plant by bringing in the plug-in hybrid. Because that is critical to our car industry here in South Africa. We export most of our production. BMW exports 96% of our production. And a lot of that goes to Europe. So as Europe goes electric, so do we have to go electric in order to secure the future. So that's really on our agenda and what we see, if you I had to predict the future of the industry here in South Africa, we will see the production of, of, of vehicles in South Africa also following that trend. But the BMW Group, as you know, believes in technological openness. So we continue to focus on diesel, petrol, plug-in hybrids and electric. And we're even working on a fifth leg, the fuel cell electric vehicle. And I think that's where the world is going to go. It's going to have to go with a broad approach to our customers to meet all their needs and, the, and BMW stands for that. But electromobility must be a part of our production here in South Africa in the future in order to secure the next 50 years. You also announced a 4.2 billion investment into the electrification of the Roslyn plant. Um, tell us more about this particular investment and how it ties in into the recently announced collaboration between BMW, Sasol and Anglo Platinum to drive the green energy economy with the launch of a pilot fleet of hydrogen fuel cell electric um, vehicles and supporting hydrogen refueling technology in South Africa? Let me answer that question um, in, in, in two sections. Yeah. The first section, the investment in, in, in the, the next generation X3 is pretty multifaceted. Firstly, we have to prepare our plant for a new body, body shape, the new, new X3's body. Uh, plus, we have to prepare it for the, for the plug-in hybrid component. So that means adding various stations in the, in the body shop and in the assembly of the vehicle to, uh, to make space for the electric drivetrain and for the battery. Then there is investing in tooling for our plant and for our suppliers, plus skills development. Key is skills development, bringing those skills into the country to work with the high-voltage electric componentry in the vehicles. So that's where the 4.2 billion is going for now. The fuel cell electric vehicle you mentioned, that's something that I think will, will really be something for the next decade for us here in South Africa. But the reason we are doing this is, is key. BMW believes in technological openness, as I mentioned. So we, we, we believe in multiple drivetrains are required to meet our customers' needs. And we believe all drivetrains must contribute to the reduction of the carbon footprint. We make petrol engines more efficient, diesel engines more efficient and cleaner. The plug-in hybrid, a key bridging technology for markets where, where EVs can't yet take off. And then we have the zero emission vehicles, the electric vehicles. But we realize there's many customers who might want an electric vehicle where a battery electric vehicle doesn't meet their needs because they drive long distances or the charging infrastructure is not where it needs to be just yet. And we believe the fuel cell electric vehicle could meet their needs. 
because it's basically an electric vehicle, just like a battery electric vehicle, but instead of having a battery powering the, dr the drive motor, it has a fuel cell creating electricity. So what we're doing now together with Sassel and Anglo-American Platinum is we're bringing a fleet of IX5 fuel cell electric vehicles here to South Africa to really stimulate the discussion around a hydrogen economy. A country like South Africa or a continent like Africa has such abundance in renewable energies that we believe green hydrogen might be the answer for us. And so what we're going to do here is we're going to bring the vehicles to South Africa. We are going to drive them as a proof of concept. We'll be fueling them up with Sassel produced green hydrogen and their techno refueling technology. And we're going to take customers, government, opinion leaders through the exercise to see how could a hydrogen powered BMW play its role in a hydrogen economy around uh, mobility. And that's really to stimulate the discussion to accelerate, let's say, the transition towards green hydrogen. Okay, so around about when next year could we actually expect this pilot to kick off? In Q1. In Q1. Oh, in Q1. Wow. Yeah, quick. So it will be here in time for the SA Investment Summit. We plan to actually do a, a demonstration with these vehicles and these test drives already in February. That's that's the month we're, we're talking about. We already have a vehicle in the country. We showed it at the Green Hydrogen Summit in Cape Town. That was a real hydrogen vehicle, not just a show vehicle. Um, but the, the driving fleet still needs a little bit of preparation here, and we need to um, still install the f refueling um, technology. But Q1 next year and. Um, would be, be, be a pleasure to help you drive it. Oh, I can't wait. I'm like waiting for it. <laughs> so which other markets are actually having this pilot um, outside besides South Africa? A number of markets in the world where hydrogen is playing a key role are looking at, at trialing this fleet. Obviously in Europe it's, it's, a, it's a topic. Markets like Korea, markets like Japan are also involved in that. They already have a refueling infrastructure in these countries. We don't have it yet, but that's exactly why we're bringing it to South Africa, because we believe that we can help stimulate the development towards um, the hydrogen economy. Interesting. So definitely, I think um, to do all of this work requires a very visionary leader. And I definitely think a company is as good as the leader and his team. What can you say about your team and the passion they have for growing in South Africa with South Africans? Our team is, of course, a very committed, passionate team. Our brands, you've mentioned them, BMW, Mini, Motorrad, they're all emotion products. You buy them because of emotion. Yeah, yeah. And um, our team clearly reflects that emotion in the day-to-day -day job. And it's really a privilege to work for a company with such exciting brands. Our team is, is fully committed to, as I've mentioned, securing the next 50 years. And all the work we do right now is exactly in line of securing the, the future of our company, securing the future of the jobs here in this country and securing also the entire value chain. So keeping our suppliers localized here in South Africa and ensuring that on the other end of the value chain, our dealers are there to serve our customers and keep the customers in the brand. Do you have any South African suppliers in your global supplier chain? We do. We have a number of South African suppliers. We, if you look at our, our supplier industry, there's first tier, second tier, and third tier, for example. And we have many suppliers who are already in in the second tier and third tier supplying to the first tier suppliers. And this is being driven by our industry program together with the Auto Industry Transformation Fund where we also um, assist local suppliers with access to, to funding and with a clear commitment to also purchase um, parts and componentry from them. So creating an ecosystem with which they can survive and indeed thrive. Mm -hmm. That's quite impressive. And I think yourself, Peter, you are a 29-year BMW veteran. 29 years with BMW, and it all started here in South Africa. Right. And then you've gone to other parts of the world, like Germany, um, Japan, um, China, and you are back at home. So you've come full circle. Mm. Can you tell us a little bit about your journey um, with BMW? Well, as you said, I, I started here at BMW South Africa um, in the Midrand building. Basically, I was a graduate at studied engineering. I soon discovered the, the excitement in the industry is in sales and marketing. After a number of years here in South Africa, I was sent to Germany on a three-year contract to build up the network with headquarters. And that led from one job to another, and I ended up being gone 18 years. As you've mentioned, I, I, I spent some time in Japan, I spent some time in China, I worked in the German market, and I worked at headquarters. I do speak fluent German, or okay German, because I worked in various jobs in the headquarters. And I think for me it was an amazing privilege to be offered the job back in South Africa, as you said, come full circle, because um, 
having grown up in South Africa, having studied in this country, having started my career and worked almost 10 years at BMW South Africa, I felt I had a good understanding of the, of the country, of our, of our partners here in the country, and being able to take the experience that I gained working in headquarters uh, and working in, in China and Japan, as well as the network having, that you've gained in that time, back to South Africa put me in a position, I think, to, to really do as much as I can to secure the next 50 years of BMW South Africa. On the one hand, I'm really proud to be the first South African CEO of BMW South Africa, at the same time quite daunted by the responsibility. That's a huge responsibility. Exactly, that, you know, you're now playing for the home team in front of the home crowd yeah. and you really want to make sure. Win, right? Yes, we need, we need to win. win and we need to secure the future. South Africa is a nation of winners. Just look at the Springboks yeah. and what they've yeah. done. So we do need BMW to win. But you are carrying the hopes and dreams of over 50,000 households every single day. What keeps you awake at night? I wouldn't say I'm kept awake at night by, by it, but what, what concerns me the most, I think, is the, the responsibility we just mentioned of the, the households that, that rely on, on, on the employment with the BMW Group and our extended supplier network. And knowing South Africa, it's probably more than 50 households because of this Ubuntu that you mentioned and how, how South Africans support One each other. household looks after 10 other. Exactly. So that, that responsibility, I think, weighs heavily on my shoulders. And this is an industry in a state of transformation right now. And we talked about it already, the need to transform our industry to ensure that we are future-proof is probably the, the, my biggest concern and where I put most of my effort in working with NAMSA and working with government to ensure that, that we do secure the future of our industry, not just of BMW, but of the industry in South Africa. Because I think that's key. We're, a, we're an ecosystem. We rely on the same suppliers. It's, we, we need to all survive and thrive in this country. So how do you relax? It looks like so much pressure, so much stress, so much stuff to do. How do you unwind? Um, being able to switch off is an important part of unwinding, and I'm, I think I'm okay at that. Uh, I do a little bit of sport, so cycling is, is probably my sport of choice, a little bit of fitness, play football with my young son, that's great, he teaches me a thing or two. Um, I love being with my family, we love traveling, um, traveling in Africa, in South Africa. Um, and then I have a few hobbies which probably are more me time, um, I, I'm a hobby barista, so I, I love coffee, I love making coffee. And that, then I also like tinkering around with, with cars and motorcycles, so I don't have much time and space to do old cars, but um, I, have, I have an old car that I, I love, and I customize motorbikes, so BMW motorbikes, of course. Um, I have an electric guitar, in fact, I lie, I have two electric guitars um, and a bass guitar, but I'm useless. <laughs> <laughs> so the truth comes out. So that creates the balance, right? Indeed. You excel in everything but the electric guitar. Electric but you still guitar. love the electric guitar. I love it and um, I can play smoke on the water with two strings, but that's about it. Oh, that's beautiful. So just in closing, what would be your advice to the youth of South Africa, to leaders in society, to leaders in business, and to leaders in government? Remember, we are building together. We are in this together. And we need to create a South Africa and an Africa that will thrive. So that's a big, big challenge, um, asking me for these words of wisdom. But for the youth, I would really encourage them to focus on, on education, making the most of their education opportunities, um, especially considering um, you know, where the industry is going. Focus if, on science and technology and digitization because that's the future. So education, education, education. Have fun, but focus on education. Um, for, for industry and, and, and businesses as a whole, I would say be part of the solution. Don't just stand on the sidelines and criticize. I think too many are doing that and show leadership. I think we have enough managers in this world. We need leaders. We need leaders who inspire people and who show the, the way forward um, to their people by leading by example. And when it comes to government, especially, I mean, our government, the key is make South Africa a place where people want to invest. So you need policy stability where people can really do long-term investment and fight for an environment where, where foreign companies and local investors have faith in investing, in going into debt for the future because, because they know that they can make a, make a success here. We as the industry are there to, to work with suppliers and to work with others and to work with government. But the government's role is to create the environment of, of policy stability. And they've done it brilliantly with MIDP, which is the Motor Industry Development Plan, and followed that with APDP. That's why we're here today. And I think there's many areas where the government can still 
add to that and, and use the example of the motor industry to bring other investors into this country to create more jobs and there to, to tackle our problems in this country of unemployment and poverty. Wow, so this has really been an insightful chat. I'm really privileged to actually have a chat with you and just sit and brainstorm about where to next for BMW for South Africa. But most importantly, I'm really honored to have you share with us the story of BMW in South Africa, especially the contribution that is actually done by everybody at BMW. And Team BMW, thank you so much. I think to you guys, you are the real patriots. Every day you wake up and you make South Africa proud and you contribute to making South Africa a competitive country. You contribute to putting South Africa in the map and you also contribute to making us believe and to dream and believe that South Africa is indeed the gateway to Africa and to the world. Thank you so much. Oh, wow, so this is a very beautiful car. Is it the new X7? It's the new X7. Okay, what makes this particular X7 different from the previous one? Well, it's got the, the new face to our X7, which is ties it in with the, the 7 Series as well as the, the XM. Mm -hmm. So it's our, let's say, our luxury class face. So you immediately recognize this car as being part of a family of, of luxury vehicles in the BMW brand. Mm -hmm. The interior, of course, is, is oh, also fine. luxurious. Um, if you just put your head back, you feel the comfortable cushion. <laughs> um, yeah. So it's a great car to be sitting at the back of, but it's mm -hmm. also a great car to, to be sitting behind the steering wheel. This is, it's also badged the M60. So it's our, our M Performance uh, Edition with the V8 engine, petrol engine, but you also of course get a diesel version of this vehicle, so mm -hmm. it suits either customer's mm -hmm. need. What else can we actually expect in terms of new cars or new products, um, lines that would actually be coming out of South Africa um, recently? Well. Coming to South Africa, to South we have Africa. a very, very exciting vehicle um, coming to the market very soon. It's the new 5 Series. Okay. So this is a, a beautiful uh, new design, part of BMW's new design language that's coming in. It will arrive in the country early next year. In fact, we had a vehicle um, at Sun City this weekend for the Nedbank Golf oh, Challenge, wow. so we had it on show there. Um, of course, very important for us here in South Africa is the new X3, which will come into production the second half of next year. Um, first come as a, as a plug-in hybrid and then the additional petrol and diesel variant. So our factory in South Africa will be producing petrol, diesel and hybrid. And the hybrid, this is really unique, is that it will be producing the hybrid X3 for the world. So it's the only factory in the world producing hybrid X3. South Africa. South Africa. So Did you say it's the only honor. factory in the world? Producing the hybrid X3. out of South Africa, Indeed. the hybrid X3, and that's in 2024. That's in the signal of 2024, yeah. And I think that's, a, that's again a, a signal to South Africa of, of the faith BMW puts in, in South it's Africans and our production network because any customer mm -hmm. in the world who wants to order an X3 plug-in hybrid are going to get a South African built car. Mm -hmm. And I think something very important that we didn't talk about yet, but the South African plant uh, proved um, a case in point for the BMW group as they were globalizing production. Some customers said, but I want a BMW made in Germany. Yes. And we said, you know, it's made by BMW. That's what matters, not made in Germany. Mm -hmm. And we proved it in, in, in 2002 when we won the JD Power Gold Award, the Roslyn mm -hmm. plant, and in 2015, in fact, the Platinum Award, which for JD Power is the highest level of award. Mm -hmm. So it showed that BMWs produced by BMW is what's important, not in which country they're produced. So basically, the BMW X3 hybrid in 2024 is coming out of South Africa to the world. To the world. That's quite amazing. It is. That it is, is actually We're proud quite mind-blowing. Mm -hmm. Wow. And in terms of um, any other BMW cars that would be coming out of the Roslyn um, facility in the next like five to ten years, um, what sort of vehicles can we actually look out for? Well, for the next generation, we are producing the, X, the new X3. We only produce one product in the plant. That's how we get the economies of scale oh, okay, in order to attract suppliers. That was key to the, the change in the yes, mid-90s yes, that we yes, talked yes. about, was going from multiple products to one single product, allowing your suppliers to come to the country. because they only. So it's to basically going to be the BMW X3 hybrid um, center of excellence. Yes, exactly. And then we produce petrol and diesel versions as well. That's key to, to maximizing our product output yes. so that we have customers all over the world also yes. for petrol and diesel vehicles and by diversifying your portfolio you make sure that you keep your production at a maximum volume. And that's, this that's means key. you will do both right-hand drive and left-hand drive out of South Africa. Yes, we've been doing that for years. 
that's actually quite amazing. And, that, and that's, you talked about early on about skills development. Um, that made, of course, every time you make a change in the plant, it requires training, of course, because yes. it's a different way to, to assemble a left-hand drive to a right-hand drive car. And we produce for over 40 countries in the world. So we, and they all have different specifications. Mm -hmm. And so, and then also when we started with what we call just-in-sequence production, again, it required training because to get the right parts at the production line for the right car. We even produce the car separate with, from their doors and then we bring the doors back to the car and meets the car again on the production line. That is all highly skilled uh, manufacturing um, and therefore what we're really proud about is that the, the auto industry and BMW in particular, we actually have skilled jobs that we offer within our value chain and in fact from the IT hub, highly skilled jobs. So it's, it's something that we're really proud of here in South Africa is that the jobs we offer on a very high level. Yeah, and obviously I think add to that there's a huge component of um, small, medium enterprise um, development and um, there's also quite a huge component of that that speaks to, um, you know, building local, um, you know, SMMEs to mm. actually um, deliver to the BMW group globally. Yeah. Um, at the, uh, the key to that is starting local, so a supplier that supplies a component for our local production is then opening the door to say, well, wh why can't the supplier also supply the group globally? And there are some suppliers of ours who produce parts here for our vehicles in production who also supply the parts for, for the worldwide after sales use, for example. So we not only export cars, but we also export components and parts from South African producers. And I'd imagine as well for the team that is currently working for BMW here in South Africa, they get training opportunities to um, other BMW facilities around the world. Yes, um, our lead plant in fact is in Spartanburg, USA. So um, if we need employees to, to see how the production steps are going on the, the new X3, for example, we would send them to Spartanburg or we would bring people from Spartanburg yeah. to South Africa for, for a skills transfer. Um, we also have what we call a, a Plant Zero in Munich where the, the first phase of production is planned for a new vehicle and we send people there as well to understand the first steps when you're adapting your production line for a new product. That's all already happened for the, for the new X3. The first robots are already installed in our, in our factories um, and the first assembly stations are already there. So we are in a, in a very far degree already of completion of our factory for the new X3. Wow.